Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 40th World, where we do reviews on entertainment celebrities, okay? And sometimes we'll break out in local news that's happening out here in Atlanta, okay? But usually we focus on celebrity news and entertainment, all right? Just giving you that feedback. Don't forget to hit, uh, hit that uh, subscribe button, share, like, and view all of my videos, okay? And if you're so inclined, please subscribe to the channel because you know I like it when you subscribe and I like it when you like and share my videos, okay? But you know I like it when you subscribe, 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 okay? And you get in that comment section and you interact with me and what I put out, okay? Because I like to hear y'all's opinions here and there too. I do. Good, bad, and different. Like Love Juice says, I love them all, okay? But um, let's get on into this girl's trip. Don't want to tear it too long with it because I tell you the first, I think, four or five episodes were feeding me. But after that, I went into total starvation. It really shouldn't have lasted as long for me uh, with the episodes. It's just like it was just being dragged out, dragged out, dragged out. And here we are talking about uh, season one, episode eight. And they have another one that's going to be um, showing on Monday on the VH1 channel, uh, 9 o'clock my time. I'm Eastern Standard Time Zone. And I will, more than likely will try to catch it, but I won't review it because it had, like I said, after four or five episodes, it lost its uh, steam. It came to its peaking point and the rest was just repetitions. You know, it's just showing us the same old, same old stuff. But I got to say, uh, if the show was made for... Kim and Chili and um, Maya, Kim surpassed them all. She, for me, was shown in a very beautiful light of not just focusing on entertainment, but what she was trying to bring to the forefront was sisterhood, unity, and just loving on each other, regardless of whether you're in the entertainment business or you're not, or entertainment field, I should say, or career choice, or you're not. It's just, it's hard to make good friends. Um, that you haven't grown up with and solidified a very good safety net. You know, sometimes, you know, people are in your life for a season or people are in your life for a reason, you know what I'm saying? And then it just has this dated time. But if you could find at least one hand, good or good folks or just two in your lifetime, you done done well, okay? Because you could be in the midst of having a lot of people around you, but none of them that you can really tru truly trust. They're not tried and true. That's why I said you can't have a lot of people around you because they're not there for your uh, benefit. They're there to reap off your benefits and definitely, you know, surround themselves with all the good times and all the fun. But something happened to you, you start going downhill, or uh, they jumping off the train like it ain't nobody's business, like something done caught a fire. Okay. Uh, the, ship, the ship is sinking, and they're trying to get them raft, we call it raft life jackets, and those, uh, what do you call those things? They're not dinghies, but they're life rafts or whatever, and get in the water, they're going to leave you, okay? But I was just like, wow, 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 all right? But I definitely enjoyed it. Let's get on into this commentary for season one, episode eight, and we'll see what we can do. And tell you the truth, I wish she would get another season, but I don't want her to have the same group of people. I think everybody in that said group for season one had its time, and we learned a lot or didn't learn anything about them, really, you know, that we could make an educated, uh, wait a minute, hold on, we couldn't make an educated consensus of what we were able to observe to really understand their mentality or wherever they were coming from or what, you know, whatever they were trying to give us, and I'll go more in detail when I take each one of them at an observation time of how I feel about what they gave me. Okay, but we're going to get into it. Uh, it says day two of the carnival. You know, they're at Carnival. They're actually uh, doing their thing, having good times and all of that, and partying for a change. Got the women, they're getting ready for, like I said, the carnival. Rome is giving them direction like he do every morning. And he's telling the women to get up, get out of their beds, and get ready for the second leg of carnival. Okay, Chilla's ex exercising. Okay, she got to stay fit, you know, because uh, she's another one that does the body good. You know, she definitely believes in, I guess, yoga, every, uh, oh, what do you call it, weight training, exercises, aerobics, 
She just love her body and she loves feeling good when she walks out in public. She knows she got a banging body. She can go the distance if she had to. And, you know, I can respect her for that. You ain't got nothing wrong with it. But then when you try to include other people in your exercising, <laughs> girl, don't get depressed. Don't get mad when they be like, uh-uh, that's your thing. That ain't my thing. Look at my body. It's good. It's good. I ain't going to have nobody like you. And I may not have great stamina. But guess what? I love me. That's pretty much what um, B. Simone was telling Chela because she went to visit her. Just have a little, I guess, fake uh, in her mind, looking at Chili as a mother figure, conversation, you know, she was telling her, you know, she glad she met her, got a chance to know her a little bit better, um, Beast Mom started talking about her mom and how things are just not connecting, but she wants them to connect, and this, that, and third, and I'm like saying to myself, girl, this is not a time for us to hear about your mother baby blues, okay, you really need to take that off the channel, or this, uh, cruise thing y'all got going on and get some deep uh, uh, counseling off camera. Uh, nobody really needs to see that because everybody knows everybody household faces some type of ordeal or situation in their lives that they're not necessarily fully dealing with and that you need to have some counseling. And it's okay. I mean, I have, I can only speak for the black race because I'm in the black race and I hear and know what goes on. We are a spiritual group of people that we think prayer can solve everything. But, you know, works without, um, well, deeds without works is really falling on fruit or ground. You know what I'm saying? You got to exercise what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. You can't just think it into fruition. You got to act upon it and speak it into um, speak it into existence as well as work towards to that goal. Okay. And, you know, we as black people have been definitely like, okay, you don't need to take medication. You don't need to seek out outside of sources. You just need to pray. Well, guess what? The Lord made many different people around here to help us with this daily walk of life. And it is very stressful. So if you have to take medication, you have to uh, go talk to somebody that's not affiliated with you, know nothing about you, a plain Jane, a uh, Mr. Paul or whoever, and you want spiritual counseling, do all three, okay? It's not going to hurt. Anything is going to harm you if you don't do one or the other or all three, okay? So get out the mentality that everything, you have to pray about it. You have to pray and you have to get up off your behind and make things happen. And pray about whether what are you doing in your life is sufficient for the Lord. And the Lord will straighten you out. He will answer you. Trust and believe that. Now, I am a very spiritual uh, geared woman. And I have my desires and my wants. But, you know, I have to have patience. But I have to work on myself as well. And I have to look towards working towards those goals. So the Lord can align me when it's time for me to fall into position. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Just a little nugget. But getting back to uh, that scene. You know, Chilla was being very motherly. And she was giving her great advice. And she was telling her, you know, you got to face your fears. Because they're not going away. Only thing you should be. And that's my pun intended scared of is the Lord, okay, the one who created your soul and that can destroy it in a blink of an eye, okay, us as human beings, you never should be scared, you should never be scared to face an opportunity or a missed opportunity and, and correct some things, okay, uh, just like they did things to you, you need to go and tell them how you felt about what they did, and if it's a repairable situation it's, and it's beneficial, mutual for both of you all, continue to work on it, and hopefully people can't forget what happened and move on, you know, it's, it's good to forgive, but whether you forget the situation that happened, I don't know, and um, it's just one of those things, I tell you, my dog is getting on my nerve, Lord, Woo, I know he's going to be the last one I get in this earth, earthly time. I don't want no more dogs. Oh, I don't. Woo. <sighs> but anyway, getting um back to this article. Uh, I mean, not article. Um, sitcom show that I was reviewing. 
you know, they were tossing around some ideas uh, of that nature. Then be small keeps harping on her mom and about contacting her and she wanted Chili to be there with her. And I'm like, girl, call the mama, don't call the mama, but get over it. Okay, get on with it. Is she gonna be in your life or is she not gonna be in your life? If you choose for her to be in your life, you're gonna have to forget the past. You're gonna have to forgive her and you got to start anew. At the very first time you sit down and talk to her, Get it all out, hash it all out, and forgive. I mean, truly forgive and forget it, okay? It's in the past. If you want a relationship with this person, you're going to have to forget everything. But remember, and set barriers and, and constrictions of where y'all can't go wrong because then it's not even worth trying to go forward. So y'all just need to talk about it. And if, you know, Lord willing... Y'all can make a, a, a comeback. Do that. Do that. Okay. Be mother and daughter if, if at all possible. Okay. Then we got little Kim. She's talking to her daughter on the phone. Uh, both of them are missing each other. It's quite cute. You know, I love it. I love it. I love it. Because not one time did I see Kim just really express herself like, oh, I miss her. I got to go home and just that third. Like, uh uh. Kim came to play. And to make some money. Okay, Dora, me, you no know, backs, green backs, not no coins. She came to get them dollars and to solidify herself in another field of entertainment, if possible. Because we all know everybody can't get up there and keep singing and, and doing this high power choreography when they're out there on the stage. You got to have other means and other streams of revenue, honey. I know that. I'm learning that. Okay. And it just is what it is. Okay. Then we got Chili, Pretty V, Maya, B. Simone are all getting ready. And, and, and Chili's asking uh, her what went on uh, about, you know, why it took V. Simone so long to get dressed and this, that, that. You know, just having banter pretty much. And then Maya is asking Chili. Does she like her outfit? Has she seen her outfit? This, that, and third. Chili says she won't like her booty out and ass out and all like this. I'm like, girl, you're just doing too much. Once again, you don't have to tell us. We'll just see you when you get to find the outfit on. We know you don't like showing your ass. You know, you like showing your titties and pop part, but you don't like showing your booty. We get it. We got it. Okay. Uh, then Maya says to the lady, she's going to um, miss them. And I'm still like, uh, my impression of Maya Got a little better, but then it started go, going south again towards the end, and it ain't going to get no better. She just is who she is. We either love her, like her, or leave her alone, pretty much. Those are the categories I have for her, and I pretty much already decided where I'm going to be. But, okay, that's a uh, one of my observations that I'm keening in real quick or what I saw from the whole first episode, well, yeah, the first episode up to this eighth one, okay, because, oh, it was just, it was, it was touch and go with me and Maya, it was touch and go, okay, then we go to Rom and Charlie, they're bonding again and talking about how fun Connor is going to be, and Jamie comes out and starts talking with them and dancing, and, and have y'all seen a lady yet, and this, that, and the third, and they're like, no, we haven't, okay, but then Tiffany comes out in her blue peacock, turquoise type of outfit and it's cute as it cute as it can be it's cute as it can be on her then you got chili she comes out with her red dream type of outfit i don't know maybe she thought she was a warrior princess in another life who knows but it was cute then you got be small she comes out in this orange and yellow saying she's being a bad bitch and it got a little bit good on she was giving me that tease okay then you got pretty v she's uh in a fuchsia pink uh, something she's giving me that Shakira Beyonce, uh, a beautiful liar type video thing going on. Yes, and then we got Maya. She comes in looking like Medusa, really, and all this gold. She's saying she's trying to be a goddess, but I'm like, mm, I don't know, honey. I don't know, but you know, it was cute mm -hmm. on her. I didn't too much like the head dress piece, but you know, because it just gave me too much of a Medusa look. Okay, but anyway, uh, then Miss um, Queen. Uh, B come out, and of course, she's looking like a Victoria's Secret angel, you know, them runway things where they got all this fur coming out and big old angel wings and stuff like that. She was very cute and adorable. I liked it that one. Then, you know, we go to another scene. We got B Small start so talking about her mom hasn't texted her back since she sent an initial text, and she's getting all anxiety filled. And 
I'm like, girl, you're doing too much. And then you ain't even at home where you can go and just knock on her door and say, let's talk, mom. Let's talk. OK, so that's a, that's a bit much for me right now. And then we got uh, Chili is dancing on wrong private parts. I, you know, I thought she was saved, you know, but she was going to get up there doing a little shake a booty dance up there. You know, in the uh, street parade and they doing their thing. I'm like, okay, okay. It's chilly. Did you forget about your same woman? <laughs> but I let it go. It was all in fun. Then we got Kim takes pictures with the little ones. Two young girls recognize who she is. and She's calling them pretty and babies. And, you know, I was just, you know, feeling the love and the mothering coming from little Kim. She's good with uh, interacting with people. Then we got Ron's pants. They rip open because he just dropping it hot. He doing the how low can you go just a little bit too much. And like I said, uh, Chili was on the back of him. Like she was trying to pump him, pump him, pump him. You know what I'm saying? Only in the sexual scene desires picture it. Okay. Yes. Uh, and he was just having so much fun. Probably drunk too. And, you know, the pants weren't tight on him. But I guess when you were trying to still drop it low, 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 uh, the pants that couldn't go no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, B. Simone. She's going to Miss Dredd. She's telling everybody she's going to miss them. This, that, that. I said, honey, you ain't got to miss them. You, could, you know how to uh, make them conversations, have that long-term relationship if you must. So then maybe he will come off the cruise line scene and get a real job that's on land. And y'all can uh, find yourselves having somewhat of a relationship. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay, then we got all the ladies who are at the time. Uh, they're reminiscing and, and about the trip. They talk about having a slumber party. How much they're going to miss each other. Blase, blase. Okay. Be Simone is talking about her mom again. Chili, pretty B. So, okay, let's go on and handle this situation. So, they go back to the, uh, what's her name? Be Simone's room. They call up the mama and everything. And, you know, uh, Charlie gives her a hug, you know, thinking this is going to be a big situation for B. Simone. But, no, B. Simone just need to react. And, and act upon it, okay, and just be done with it, all right, in some shape or form or fashion. Um, then we got B. Simone hangs up on, on her mom the first go around, around when she's trying to call her up and talk with her about what she's feeling, why, and this, that, and the third, and then she gives it another little ring ring, and she ends up talking, but she's doing like a little bit more crying than talking, but it was cool, it was cool. Uh, Chili and V tells her to calm down and, you know, the culture and everything and everything gets kind of resolved for that point. It's not really resolved because you need to do some therapy outside of this TV show and, and really, uh, understand where both parties are coming from and see, is it something they can fix and move forward with? Okay. Then we got Maya. She's, uh, taking up time talking, talking for the cameras, you know, I'm like, she, you know, she ain't really saying too much of nothing. Okay. Then they uh the women come back to the party and, and the dinner they were having and saying, you know, what they got straight now, be Simone trying to get her face together, saying she'll be out there in a few minutes. She does come back, greet the people. They're so proud of her and wish her well with reconnecting with her mom. Um then Chili gives such like a heartwarm type speech, this then the third, and it's all cool. It's all gravy. You know, she started calling herself choking up one to cry. I ain't see one tear hit the face. Okay, but it just is what it is. I I, I don't know. But let's just go on and get into my single observation, my individual observation of them in the show. First, we're going to go up with Cam. The Cam was excellent in everything she touched on this episode of uh, season, what they gave us a season one on Girls Cruise. When they're tightening like that, I'm thinking maybe they'll give her a second one. But it don't need to be Girls Cruise. It need to be something like On Land, uh, featuring Lil' Kim solely by herself, letting us see how she's interacting, you know, with everything. But like I said, Kim gave me everything. She gave me emotions, how she loves life. She gave me emotions of how she... Uh, loves her daughter and what she wants to do for her and all that. She loved, she gave me life when it was like how she was actually trying to give her opinions on each one of her girls that she had on the trip and this, that, and third. I loved it when she called herself getting, um, what do you call it, getting Maya together because it's like she had had her, when it came like to the, I think the third or fourth episode, she was so fit to be tied with Maya and her bourgeois. A-Z-Y attitude 
It was, it was just like, okay, Kim, I'm going to slap somebody up in there. <laughs> and it got Maya all over her hands that she finna get together. She finna correct her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet because she just got tired. And then she was saying or insinuating that Maya was trying to put it like she knew that she had forgot about calling B. Simone, not B. Simone, but uh, Tiffany's name. You know, like she had something to do with that. She's like, uh-uh, Tiffany, my ride or die, honey. I know how you uh, w women get down because y'all in my class. Y'all in my culture. But y'all ain't going to fuck with Tiffany. She's my ace one boo -coon. I love her. I don't care if she's, you know, not of color or my color, but I love her. We have bonded and ain't nothing going to tear that down. I'm going to get you straight, Miss Maya. And she, I mean, Kim was like, finna guy. So, ooh, be small going in, be small going in. But after Maya apologized, it kind of solidified Kim. Like, okay, I'm going to stay off her neck for now. But she come up with some more shit. We're going to end this. We're going to end this whole girl's cruise. I'm going to show her what we could really get down at. And I'm going to tell her, hell, I wish I wouldn't have brought your ass on this trip. You know, she going to go on there. But she didn't. She played nice. She played nice. She, she called it all the way back. But I'm telling you, if you gave Kim a little drink, a little drink, a drink. She probably wouldn't have been all over my ass. <laughs> but like I said, it was it was the Kim's show. It wasn't a girl's cruise featuring Chili and, and Maya trying to get some credits off this uh, little first time season uh, show. Uh uh. Kim, you need to do all your shows by yourself and just introduce people if you want to put them on that way. But honey, Maya pretty much does solidify her career. Only people that's like minded for Maya, they're going to be able to uh, roll with her because I can't. Then Chili, she's just out there. I don't know where she is. You know, she's floating on cloud something. And she needs to come on down, realize TLC is not here anymore, and you're not going to get that chemistry. Anything, I would have gave it maybe three or four months to pass, and then I would have been looking for a left eye's replacement. Okay, and that's how we would have rolled that stuff. You ain't seen uh, Beyonce and Destiny's Child um, caving in. You know, now they rode that train a little bit longer. They had to replace some folks that are original members, but then they're like, fuck this. You know, uh uh, guess the child still gonna roll on. We ain't got four, but we got three, and we finna prove, show prove, and get results, okay? We finna tap that ass, and we're gonna keep rolling, okay? And that's what they did. They made dollars until Beyonce was like, okay, I'm tired of being in a group. I wanna be single. <laughs> all the single ladies, all the single ladies, I put your hands up. Yes, she's like, uh, I love y'all. I love y'all. She didn't too much get a chance to really love on Michelle, but she faked the phone for what it was worth. Yes, she did. She faked the phone. But she was like, uh, -uh we, I'm about to do my own thing. I'm sorry. I can't I, I can't be bothered with being in a group anymore. It's too much to be bothered with. It's too much animosity. And right now, I just want to do my own thing. I want to be creative in my own way. So she quickly got out of that whole thing. But she held uh, Destiny's Child down for what it was worth for a little time frame. But that's what Chili and um, T-Ball should have did. They should have stopped being selfish. So I said, oh, we're not going to replace her. We're just going to be a two-member band. No, honey, it was three. Okay, you can't just be, you know, you can do four and five and, and, and downsize. But once you get to the three, you, you can't really touch that much more because you don't want to see two people up there. You know, this ain't uh, Captain Tennille and, and the Sonny Cher show. Hell no, nah, that we, we ain't looking like that. No, nah, we, we, we need three people in a group or more, or we just need a, one person to be solo. We don't need no two, two man act. Uh -uh, no, we can't do that. But anyway, uh, love LaKim, much blessings to her. Maybe, maybe she get another show, like I said, on her own and showcase her. Okay. We're going to move to Charlie. Charlie, beautiful man. Um, I wish you would have told us a little bit more about your life and your partner or whatever. But it seemed like you just got lost in the sauce. If Pretty V wasn't, I mean, yeah, Pretty V wasn't trying to hook up with you or B Simone trying to hook up with you to give you some camera time. I don't know, baby. It's like you shouldn't even been brought on the trip because I, I didn't get anything from you other than you were a nice guy. And it seems like you were a ride or die for Kim and Tiffany. But the rest of them, you really didn't show too much. You just more felt sympathy and uh concern for pretty v and b simone but it, it showed who you really was clipped up with which was tiffany uh and and uh little kim so if you i don't think you really gave me is that you were real cool with them and you were there to support kim's role in her new show and yes i said kim's show because like i said chili and um my wouldn't give me anything like they could connect to be on one level what kim was trying to promote 
Okay, so that's all I have for you, Charlie. But Tiffany, Tiffany, not too much for you. All the thing you showed me was that you are a ride or die. You stand out even when they try to put you in the back. You know what I'm saying? They try to, you know, boycott you and, and, and you know, try to silence you or whoever you would. Try to make fun of you, but you shy, honey. You kept your, your focus straight ahead. You know who you were there for. You know who you were as an individual as well as an entertainer, entrepreneur, and everything else. But we didn't learn that to like, like I said, the four episode when you start giving us your resume. And I was proud of you. I'm proud to be amongst these black women. You try to show up being, you know, the white one in the group, but trying to have some finesse about yourself. I was there for you, baby. I was there. And you show improved every step. You didn't come down. You didn't come off your chariot to toss tomatoes in the street with Maya. <laughs> okay. And you kind of like shaded. Uh, Chili as well, and I was glad for you because Chili should have been up warming. She should have been a little bit more warming up to you and letting you know I got your back. Even though Maya is over there, Maya is over there faking the phone and, and acting pretty ugly like a mean girl spirit. I got your back, girl. She ain't gonna get over you. I'm gonna protect you too. But Chili didn't give me that. She didn't tr step up to the plate for that. So you hit a home run in my eyes, Tiffany. I love you. Uh. Uh, love you down, girl, how they say on these YouTube strips, streets. You're cool with me, entertainment. I'm going to try to look you up more often because, like I said, I didn't know, really know who you were, who Charlie was until I do my own, you know, search on the internet, Google y'all and see that y'all have wonderful attributes of being in the social light of the entertainment field and in the midst of other reality show people or entertainers in Hollywood, okay? We're going to go to Chili. Chili, 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 Chili. I don't think you're ever going to find a man because he's not out there. The one that you're trying to build in your head, he don't exist. So God speed to you and all that you do. You're a wonderful mother. I got that. I embrace that. And I know that you are true to form when it comes to mothering and uh, being a natural uh, comforter. You are great with that. I'm sure you know you don't picked up a daughter. Uh, and be Simone, treat her right, do well by her, and I'm sure you'll get more blessings following your way. Be Simone, girl, you ain't nothing but a cry baby, but I love you. You're pretty on the outside, beautiful in the inside. Keep doing you, get therapy, spiritual therapy, and regular counseling. Okay, and if you have to be on medication uh, for your anxiety that it seems like you possess, do that. Uh, if you don't, don't put your mother such on a platform. Pedestal, but she's so high you can't reach. You know, you know she's not. She's gonna fall short of your expectations of her. Okay, so be aware, be very conscious of that. We have fall uh, flaws, and and you know we're just trying to make it on a day to day basis. I don't know what your mother uh, was really about because she only gave us so much to deal. But you know, it's your perspective. Until I see somebody that's uh, you know, where I can observe them on my own. I don't like to have one uh, perspective. I'm an open-minded person, I, and I definitely look at things from our perspectives. Um, who is calling me? Oh, I can't answer that. I'm going to call her back. Oh, they always call me when I'm trying to do something. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I had for B. Simone. Pretty V, girl, um, you have a mother in your life. It seems like she holds you, she holds you down real well. Good foundation. Um... I don't, I don't give it, give anything. I don't get from you what you're giving me. I get that you are a true warrior. You don't, uh, you may take hits, you may fall down, but you get right back up. That's a trooper. Uh, that's the one who knows herself. She knows her self worth. And um, you're very open uh, to things, and you have a loving spirit. So, a lot of love that in you, and um, definitely be around B. Simone because she needs that type of support, and you are very good at giving that to her. Okay, genuinely. Then we got Maya. Lord, we ain't going to tear her too long on Maya because I don't want to tear her down. I don't want people to think I'm tearing her down, but she has been hurt in her lifetime, and she only sees and looks out for herself. Um, I try to give Maya the benefit of the doubt. She keeps going back to blaming everybody for her situation. She's blaming her parents because they isolated her. And she's blaming her parents because they didn't provide enough for her. And I'm like, girl, which is it? Were your parents there for you and you were in a good environment or were you not? Because you're giving me both teases and I'm going to get on that. You're just a spoiled rich person. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not that 
or rich in finances, but it was, you was well off, okay? You wasn't at the bottom of the bear where people had to struggle and miss out on some of their wants and their desires, okay? Um, you know, you play one role. It's like, you, you know, your acting is very bad. People can see straight through you, at least I can. Um, you're just a troubled soul. You think you're it, but you're not it. You seem, um, you try to make people think that you got it all together and you just work, you're a workaholic. When in actuality, I didn't think anybody was checking for you because I ain't heard really no new music and what you gave us on the show when you were impromptu performing for us and for the kids out there in the Caribbean. You didn't get them that. I mean, I don't understand what you were saying. I'm like, girl, you're a newcomer. Okay, you need to have some work. You need to get back in the studio. You need to work on your craft because it's not showing that you know what the hell you're doing. But as we know, you ain't did nothing since that award show. Y'all did, um, what was her name? Patty LaBelle, Mama, Ma what do we call it? Mama Marmalade, Ma Mama Marmalade, itchy, gitchy, ya, ya, da, da, yeah, that thing, or when you perform, when Whitney Houston was, you know, looking like a poor monster out there, she had lost so much money, looking like a geek monster, pretty much, rest her soul, um, beautiful spirit of a person, she just got with the wrong crew, uh, wrong entertainment people, and, you know, it just took its course from there. But, you know, you did a good performance on that one. But, you know, it's almost like you were looking at Whitney Houston like she had done something bad to you or stuff. I don't know. But I'm like, you just like this mean girl that just haven't gotten her way or she goes in and take what she wants and, and she'll tear you down. But I'm like, you were blessed to be around uh, five, six young ladies. Well, including yourself, it was five young ladies that had just as much as you had, just as much as being in the industry, understand it real well. Or, you know, like Tiffany and Char, uh, Charlie, they've not been in the music industry, but they've been around. They've done, uh, uh, they don't seem a lot that's in the realm of entertainment and you know they can definitely uh have resources available such as you if not even more but you're just your attitude my you have a fucked up attitude girl you need to get together uh if you plan on making friends and want to stay with them but pretty v maybe you need to rub off on her because it seemed like she was a little bit more opening and a little bit more uh, where well, you can understand where she was coming from. She needs to be around you because you seem like pretty big. You can check her. Bring her back to reality and let her know, hey, you ain't all up there. You in them clouds. Ain't nobody really checking for you, baby. You almost like a D-list type person. You ain't in a C-list entertainment artist at this time. And I think pretty big can keep her well grounded and give her truth about herself even though she don't want to see it, hear it, or believe it. This is what it is. But I don't tear it too long on this, but you know how I broke it up because I'm not going to be giving y'all season, uh, I mean episode 9 I think it is because it was season 8. It just don't, it lost its steam for me around 4 or 5, uh, th those two episodes because it's like it wrapped up on, on uh, episode five, and I was good. I was grateful for it, but you start dragging it out. It just came, kept getting weaker and weaker. It's like you don't have too much to drink, but you keep going back to the bar, and they keep giving you less and less kick with the alcohol because they know you don't have enough, and that's how this was giving me, okay? It's giving me that type of tease. But like I said, that's all I had. It was a beautiful cruising along with the women in the Caribbean, trying to reach it to Tobago, Trinidad, or wherever the hell we landed, because I don't forget about or write about now. But uh, like I said, it was all good, all good. Uh, thank you, Kim, for sharing that entertainment life with us. Like I said, you shine more so than the other two that was on your tag of the show. <laughs> you gave us all and then some. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you for coming by, stopping, getting your updated version and how I felt about it. Uh, get down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about the show. Uh, should she come back with them too and add on some more? Or she should just get her own show titled Little Kim's World. I would love that a little bit more better because it's focused on her, her everyday life. And she's giving us a little entertainment jazz when it comes to the people she know in the industry. And, you know, we're getting there feedback on certain things as well as getting getting to take a look at their lives as well even though we're living it vicariously okay but that's all i had enjoyed talking to you all and i will see y'all next video bye bye